Well, good Sunday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm actually out here testing the studio set. We are having the mega live stream to end all live streams this afternoon, and I want to make sure everything is working good. Um, you know, it's been hot out here, making sure all the equipment is okay in the heat because we're going to turn the heat up uh, a few notches, just a few notches um, as we get ready for training camp tomorrow. It's going to be great because the team charter heads to Oxnard and we will begin the quest, the quest for six. And it seems like it's been forever. Um, I'm doing a couple of little tests here. Um, I'm trying, you know, unfortunately, my outdoor studio here, um, I do have the air conditioning condenser that's, you know, about 15 feet or so away. You know, we've got uh, cicadas and things that are out here. So there's a lot of outside noise and things that goes on. But I'm trying the audio processor in here, and I want to see if I've gotten the sound right. I did have a bad cable. Um, in here, but I got that squared away. There used to be a little bit of a pop. So if you could leave in the comments, how does this sound? Now, I know I sound terrible because, of course, I, I just sound like me. But is it at least clear? Are you getting any pops? Are you getting a lot of background noises and things like that? So what I wanted to talk about is, you know, it's, it's, it's almost comical how everything for the Cowboys has been that the Cowboys, you just, it's not going to be your year. You're going to be terrible. In fact, I dare say I'm happier that they are doubting the Cowboys, taking the pressure off of them of thinking that they should be a Super Bowl contender. I'd rather just go into the season and say, let's see where it goes. Now, you know my boy, Philly 500. He has been going crazy talking about how great of an offseason they've had. His expectations are minimum winning the division and maybe going as far as the NFC Championship game and seeing what happens. I'm going to have that wait-and-see attitude and see what we have. I don't think that the Dallas Cowboys have gotten to be as bad as some people think that they're going to be as the talking heads and things. Now, this was an interesting story here in Deadspin. Sorry, Cowboy fans, but 2022 will once not, again not be your year. We all the offense will regress, but the defense should be most concerning. Well, I think the Cowboys' offense may be actually evolving. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much of the offense in this video, but I think actually the Cowboys are going to be a more balanced offense. They're going to focus in on running the ball a bit more with Dak Prescott included in the mix. And we'll, we'll go into that another time, or maybe we'll go into that a little bit later on today. But going through this article, the main th reason that they said we should be worried about our defense. Now, we didn't lose a lot of pieces on our defense. We lost Randy Gregory. But losing Randy Gregory, we, we've also lost a number of penalties. We all know Randy Gregory was always going to have a, a bad penalty at the worst time. He was a great pass rusher, but again, sometimes when you get those penalties, you know, those 15-yard varieties, that negates some of those great plays that you have. I believe that Sam Williams, you know, we'll see what he has this year, but Dorrance Armstrong, and even a Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler could end up being this year's J. Ron Curse. You don't know. A guy who has had some success in the past who could be rejuvenate, rejuvenating his career. But as we go through this article, and I do want to go through it a little bit, th their main reason that they're saying this is turnovers. Turnovers are a pretty um, – let, let me size this up a little bit here, guys. Make it a little bit easier. Hopefully you guys can see this. Turnovers are a pretty, are pretty luck-dependent stat. It doesn't matter how great your cornerbacks can cover, opposing receivers, or how hard your middle linebackers can hit. Most of the time, turnovers are nothing more than being in the right place at the right time and having a series of fortunate events fall into your lap. In 2021, the Dallas Cowboys benefited from a massively from the number of turnovers they forced. That is true. That is true to a point that you do have to be in the right place at the right time. Um, and the Cowboys definitely did end up having more than their share. They led the league in takeaways. Cowboys led the league in both interceptions and total turnovers. They were tied for the NFL lead in turnover, 
turnover differential. That's great. Most of the time, teams near the top of the turnover differential tend to continue success from season to season. Whether it's because of a quarterback with an uncanny ability to take care of the football or because of suffocating defense with great ball awareness. Teams that high up the leaderboard tend to do well the following season, which is good news right there. So, okay, so wh- where's the problem? Um, they go on and talk about teams that had led it and how they did the following year. So, generally speaking, when you lead it one year, you kind of come back to earth for the second. So, over the past eight years, only six teams to rank in the top three for yearly EPA off turnovers wound up betting, beating their totals in EPA the following year. Only four... Um, and only four already had a negative defensive one to begin with. Of the 18 that got worse, only eight regressed by four. Okay, that's saying they didn't. Okay. The thing about this is, and, and they go on to say, and, and with Diggs, you know, you can't expect Diggs to get 11. I, I'm not, I'm a homer. I, I'm going to probably overvaluate my players, but I'm not going to say that Diggs is going to get 11 interceptions again this year. I'm, I'm not going to be that crazy. And, in fact, when you think of the season that he had, nobody's had 11 this century but him. That's 22 seasons. 22 seasons. But I will say this, because in this, they also go on about how players who have led the league, generally speaking, have about half the next year. And let let me get into that. Um, there hasn't been a single player to lead the NFL in interceptions and record more than half of their total the following year. Said they have not. So what they're saying is, is Diggs won't get more than five or six, right? But I will say this, because see, this is one of those things that's interesting. Now, I don't know if he led the NFL that year, but 2013 and 2014, Richard Sherman had eight interceptions both seasons. Now, he might not have led the league that year, but that's a player who did have the same number. Not saying that that Diggs is going to have as many. But I will say this much. The other part of the equation when it comes to takeaways also is not just the guys catching the football. It's the defense that you play has a big part of it as well. The thing that you have to look at with Dan Quinn's defenses in Seattle, as well as with Dallas last year, is they are very aggressive. They are going to challenge the receivers, as opposed to Rod Marinelli, who was the bend, don't break, don't take any risk because I'm old and don't want to have any issues. And so you would see a lot of big cushions with that defense. Not with this one. The Cowboys are aggressive. They go after you. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Got a little tick in my throat. The Cowboys will go after you. That's the first thing. The second thing is when you have a guy like Micah Parsons who gets to the quarterback really, really quick, and you add a healthy Demarcus Lawrence, and you add big guys in the middle that are quick, what you will see is you will see quarterbacks that are trying to release the ball quicker quarterbacks who will be molested and having bodies draped on them, quarterbacks that will fear for their life. And when you have these things, you have a tendency to make more bad throws or throw before you're ready or before the receiver is ready, which means there's more opportunities. It's no coincidence that Seattle, with Dan Quinn and the aggressive style of defense that he played, led the league a couple of years or we're in the top five every year in takeaways. And so, you know, this is a great article, and and it makes sense when you look at some of the numbers and you think, well, the Cowboys' defense won't be as good because they probably won't get as many takeaways. That may be true. But the Cowboys' defense may be better because they're able to stop the run because they have bigger guys in the middle. The Cowboys' defense may be better because their front seven is more athletic, quicker, and now has a little more experience. The Cowboys' defense may be better because maybe Mark DeMarcus Lawrence doesn't miss seven games in the season, as well as Nabelle Gallimore missing 13. So all of these things, I am so glad that we'll be able to put to bed because now 
the off season has come to a close or will come tomorrow. And we'll be talking about practice, not, 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 not a game. We'll be talking about practice again in the comments. Let me know. Does this sound okay? Does it look okay? And if, uh, you like what you see from the outdoors here, it is, uh, in the 90s today, so it is warm, but the nice thing about the studio here is I've got two ceiling fans that are up here that are blowing around, as well as another fan down there. And I'm hoping that you don't hear any of the ambient noise. But as always, friends, I appreciate you, and I will see you soon.